you put everything together, Eastside having problems at home here with a young Stark team that, quite frankly, should be ahead in this game right now. But you got a good performance off the bench from Todd Woolard, so Eastside leads by one. But they're in a dogfight, no doubt about it. Are the Rams going to have to try to run more in the second half than they've been able to do in the first half since they were so successful well, last week? Well, they have run. It's just that they haven't been successful running. They have gotten a lot of entry passes, but the thing that has really surprised me the most in this first half is the way that Stark has been able to contest their inside shots. They're at a disadvantage with height, but they've got some great leapers. Malachi Jenkins, Diggs can really get off the floor. They've blocked some shots, and I think Eastside was surprised at that. I think they thought they were going to have their way not only in the outside and running, but on the inside. It's the inside game of Stark which has really given Eastside some problems. As I said, contesting everything defensively, and they're not really in a lot of foul trouble. This could be a very interesting second half. If Bradford County is going to win this game, how are they going to do it? Do exactly what they've done in the first half. Take Lloyd Clark out of the game and make the focus of the offense come down to the uh, necessity that East Side is going to have to get offensive rebounds to win the game. That's what made them get ahead by only one point in this half. Their offense is not jailed. Stark right now, as for all intents and purposes, is leading this game. And they're going to have to keep it close. If they keep it close, that's when they have their best shot. Exactly. Exactly. All right, here we go for the second half. Take a look right there, Ken. The concern on Bob Wentz's face, he is really upset. He's got the jacket off now, so you know he means business. The jacket is off. The collar's unbuttoned. What do you think of that tie? is loose. Well, Check, Todd Woolard. He didn't, he didn't get it this week. I can promise you that. <laughs> Check the scoring. Todd Woolard led all scorers with 13 in the first half for Bradford County. Pat Diggs and Malachi Jenkins had 10 each. So we're set to go. We're just underway in the third quarter. The, from difference, the, side, the difference there, Ken, excuse me, the offense for Stark coming where they expected it. Diggs and Jenkins, they're two leading scorers, but they're not getting the offensive output from the normal scorers is east side. Again, Woolard off the bench with 13 to lead them. That's not their offense. Lead pass to Garrison, it's good. Got it inside Pat Diggs. And here comes the press. 42-38, east side leading. Rob Norman is back in the game at a guard. He wears number 11. Norman is the young man who covered Lloyd Clark man-to-man -man most of the first half. Oh. And he hits from downtown Palatka. His first points of the night. Well, he's a zone buster, and that's just what he did right there. Only a junior. Remember, this is a very, very young Stark team. Only two seniors in the lineup, Ron Brown, the big rebounder, the All-State football player, and Pat Diggs. Garrison has his shot blocked by Diggs. Second time tonight, Diggs has rejected an exactly east side shot. Exactly what we've been talking about. East side is getting stunned on the inside here. Eugene Bly pulls up, and with a little rim luck, no good. Rebound Todd Woolard. Shot that immediately against that 2-3 zone. Stark might have to use a little bit more patience offensively. They've gotten themselves in trouble a couple of times where they've taken quick shots. Eric Hopkins drives and gets it to Garrison, but Ron Brown blocked it and blocked it again. Now we've got a foul as Garrison hit the wood. Bernard Bird, Bernard Bird checks in for Robert Williams. The outside official there, Sam Brown, who made that call, caught some action on the wrist, and he says two shots. I believe the foul was on Brown. That would be his third. Daryl Garrison hits. He is three out of five from the line tonight. 74% free throw shooter coming in. Very good free throw shooting team is this Eastside club. Averaging 72% on the season as a team. And taken away by Todd Woolard. Eric Hopkins is number 15. Rams lead by four, 44-40, 6.23 to play, third quarter. Get it to Garrison again. And over Ron Brown, no good. Pat Diggs rebounds. Diggs really getting up. You can see why he's being recruited. Hey, he went up against a team that plays a lot like Eastside and had 22 points against powerful Dixie County. Eugene Bly, no good. Rebound, Daryl Woolard. Todd Woolard, rather. Hopkins pushing the ball up the court to Lloyd Clark in the corner. Hopkins deep in the corner. Well, that's what East Side needs because the Tornadoes are really packing the defense in. They got to get some outside shooting. I've been surprised, Ken, how easily they've been able to press to break the East Side press. Pat Diggs shot no good. 
Eric Hopkins comes up with it and a three on two break. Hopkins pulls up, no good. Diggs can't come up with a rebound. Oh. Bernard Bird can, shot blocked by Diggs. Garrison turning in the lane and hits. Diggs has those long arms and that quick leaping ability. He's blocked four shots already in this game. Ah, stolen away by Lloyd Clark. Rob Norman on the turnover, and Clark drives and off the glass and in. Yeah, the young player that time, they, they used that same move a couple of times up court, and Eastside was waiting for it that time. It is now 50 to 40, a 10-point lead. Jenkins to Diggs. Diggs in the lane. We've got a whistle. That time, Diggs flashed in the lane, got the entry pass. They've been able to get the entry pass in there quite successfully, and Diggs has been going to the basket with it. So uh, once they get the ball up court against this press, and they're having more trouble with the press here in the second half than they did in the first, they know what to do with it. It's a well-schooled team. Jay Godwin's done a very, very good job with this young ball club. Eric Hopkins got the foul. Pat Diggs to the line for the first time and didn't even need the rim. Again, Godwin in his second year at Stark, and, of course, Bob went in his second year at Eastside. They're familiar with each other. Godwin, much appreciated. All right, Ken, coming back in our broadcast location, and uh, very, very interesting game tonight. I think a lot more interesting than most people had anticipated as a young Stark team. Uh, looks very good here on the road. I'll admit, the first thing I said when I came here tonight is, who scheduled this game? But it didn't turn out like that. The Tornadoes uh, did a, a great effort, only losing by nine and really in the game until, until the waning seconds. But next week, what a game that is going to be. Buholtz against Lakeland Kathleen and my first shot and some other, a lot of people in Gainesville's first chance to see Livingston Chapman, who should be a force for the Florida Gators next year. I hope everybody tunes in for that one. It's really going to be a great matchup. And we'd like to say thank you to Bob Wendt for taking time here. He's a very intense coach and uh, to take his time and come out here. And I'm sure the Eastside players appreciate that he was able to cool off for a few minutes here with us because I know he's gonna, they're going to get a near fill tonight. All right, until next week, from when we'll come to you from the Buholtz High School gym and Buholtz will take on Lakeland Kathleen. I'm Ken Tomash for Bob D'Alessio. We'll see you next week.